ブランドスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Hey guys, Kakarot 197 again. This time with a review of the high grade Chaos Gundam from the Gundam Sea Destiny anime series. And this model kit has been provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobbyling Japan. Links to buy your own Chaos down below. And at first glance, this is very much your typical Gundam Seed model kit. The proportions could have been a bit more lean and mean, seam lines are a constant threat, and the color accuracy does its job. We get the usual eye sticker, and for a reason that I cannot comprehend, an orange sticker for the V fin. Someone missed the turn of the millennium. And not only that, but just like the other orange sticker that we're getting, it's not matte as it should be, but shiny. Finally, then, we get two white stickers for the back skirt. The painting, still required then, is white for the sides of the face, grey for the sea whiz guns, blue for the front camera, back camera, and this part, yellow for this thing on the chest, grey on its lower abdomen, orange for on top of the side thrusters and the insides of these thrusters, and finally, you'll need some grey for the inside of the hatch of these mobile weapon pods. So, straight out of the box, the Chaos Gundam isn't too shabby for a Gundam seat model kit, if only it hadn't been for those metallic stickers ruining it. But let's forget about that and have a look at the accessories. First of all, we get the high energy beam rifle, and the construction of this thing literally couldn't have been simpler, it's two halves slapped together, and we will still need to do quite a bit of painting. White here, there, and there. Grey on the handle, the barrel and there, red for these two thingies, and then green for the sensor. Fortunately, because it is a grey gun, it doesn't look too bad as is. One thing that is really good about this beam rifle is just how secure it is in either hand. So at the very least, posing with it won't be a problem. What might be a problem to pose are these not gun barrels, the mobile weapons pods. The thing is, these do look really cool. They have also a really cool feature. Once you press this in, the barrel pops out and you can easily extend it and then easily push it back in. And the good thing is, it doesn't easily fall back in, so it's perfect. It's exactly as it should be. This can easily be pulled back as well. And then this hatch also opens, revealing the missiles. Sure, you have to paint the inside a little bit, but other than that, this is a really cool thing. The only problem is, we don't get a stand or anything to pose them, so if you want to pose your Chaos Gundam with the gun, well, with the mobile weapons pods deployed, you're gonna have to somehow make your own stand for this, which I would highly recommend doing. It just would have been cool if it came with something, like some kind of adapter that slid in here and then just allowed you to easily hook it up to an existing action base. But so be it. And talking about things that would have been cool if they were included, let's have a look at the beam sabers. Now we do get two quite plain looking beam sabers that do have a hole to plug in any standard high grade beam saber blade, but we don't actually get the beam saber blades themselves. And how annoying or bad this is, is gonna depend on how big of a Gumpla fan you are. If you own quite a bit of high grades already, chances are you have a lot of these lying around so you can just use any other beam saber you've got. But if this is one of the only high grades you're gonna buy, it is quite an annoying omission. But there are more missing beam effect parts on this kit that are significantly more of an issue. The claws on its legs and its feet are supposed to emit a beam saber blade that's very similar to the Aegis and that is specific to the Chaos Gundam. So you can't easily replace them with any old beam saber you've got lying around. In fact, they don't even have a hole to connect any beam effect part to them. Quite a missed opportunity if you ask me, because this really would have made the Chaos Gundam stand out in its mobile armor mode. Then finally, let's have a look at the shield that we're getting. It's nicely detailed, just as the rest of the Chaos Gundam, but we will again have to do a little bit of painting. This thing has to be painted yellow, these Sea Whiz guns have to be painted grey, and then this part here also has to be painted grey. Attaching it to the arm is super simple, you just peg it on there and that is it. So that's all for the accessories that this thing comes with, and now let's move on to its main gimmick. The transformation. It starts off as any good transformation with a beheading. 
this thing then moves forward. We put the arms in place and we're already almost done. The only thing left to do now is to pop this out, angle everything correctly, and then just swing the legs forward. And then of course the real final step that's not in the manual is attaching it to an action base. And I gotta say, this was a very easy to pull off and also very faithful transformation. It would have been cool if the head also transformed as it should have, but so be it. And in its big remote, it also has access to one more weapon, the Kalidusky Multi-Phase Beam Cannon, which you will have to paint red and the rest of this area black. And talking about things you have to paint on its mobile armor mode, the inside of its leg also has to be painted gray. And with the Chaos Gundam back in mobile suit mode, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on a single ball joint, so what you get is not all that much. The shoulders then are on a simple peg joint, so they will rotate around all the way. The arms go up about that far, rotate around below the shoulder, bent at the elbow on a single joint for about 90 degrees. The hands are as always on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. The waist then is on a peg, but you're not getting nearly the amount of rotation that you would expect. The reason for this is the back skirt. This thing isn't actually attached to the hips as it usually is, but it's attached to the backpack. And even though it can go backwards on this joint right here, it's actually stopped from going backwards because of this thruster. So if you were to cut this piece out, the backpack would be able to go up way more and would then also allow the body to rotate way more. But as it is, we're not getting a whole lot of movement out of it. The front skirts are molded together but can be separated, allowing the legs to go forwards quite nicely. Backwards movement then will depend on how much to the side you put the leg. Outwards that far, although it's not actually limited by the side skirt, but by the ball joint that it's on. It will of course also rotate around a little bit on that ball joint. And then the knees are double jointed for a quite nice bend. And then finally the feet are on a peg and ball joint combo, going forwards quite nicely backwards really nicely, side to side, and will also rotate around. So overall, the articulation of the Chaos Gundam is slightly below what you would get from the average Gundam seat model kit because of that back skirt. Back in the day, this was totally acceptable, but it hasn't aged very well. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well, it's an overall adequate representation with a cool gimmick on the not gun barrels and a transformation that works and looks surprisingly good. Other than that, it's kind of what you'd expect from the average high grade Gundam seed kit. You'll still have to put some work in it and even then it might still leave something to be desired. Fortunately for fans of the Chaos Gundam, there is always the 100 scale that fixes most if not all of these issues. I'll have that link down below as well. So I would recommend getting that over the 144 scale any day of the week, unless of course you wanna display him next to his teammates, which only got one 144 scale kits. TLDR, I want the revive of this thing with all of its features. So then, for some more size comparisons, here he is next to the old and new Impulse Gundam to really illustrate what I meant when I said that the proportions could have been a bit more lean and mean. And then finally, here he is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And with those combined weapons pods, the Chaos Gundam also manages to be quite a bulky machine for something from the Cosmic Era. So that's all for this review, brought to you by Hobbling Japan, links down below. And as always, another big thanks to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.